It doesn't happen often that history is made by a man's choice of a bed. But one night in March 1939, Adolf Hitler went to bed in a castle in Prague. And in doing so, he symbolized the transformation of Nazi foreign policy. Prague was the capital of a non-Germanic nation. Previously, the basis of Hitler's policy had been to unite Germans. When Hitler went to bed in Prague, German policy was already one of conquest. I would spring like lightning in the night and hurl myself on the enemy! Where would Hitler want to sleep next? In Warsaw, in Bucharest, in Athens? London and Paris pitifully buried their hopes of appeasement. Chamberlain promised British support to Poland, Romania, and Greece if their independence was threatened. Hitler answered by tearing up the treaty of friendship he had signed with Chamberlain at Munich. He also tore up his non-aggression pact with Poland. In May, he signed a military alliance with Italy, though it wasn't disclosed at the time that he promised Mussolini there would be no war before 1942. When we shake hands, it is the handshake of men of honor. Before he could deal with Poland, he had to make certain that the Soviet Union wouldn't fight if Britain and France did. The British and French wanted the Soviet Union on their side. But Stalin didn't believe them when they said they would fight over Poland. He wanted security against attack, which to him meant bases in Finland and the Baltic states, and the right to occupy their territory in a crisis. But Hitler was ready to pay Stalin's price. In August 1939, the deal was made. Hitler and Stalin publicly ate 10 years of words of hatred. Heil Hitler! Comrade! <laughs> With the Soviet pact in the bag, Hitler could go ahead. If he could get Danzig without a war and cut through the Polish corridor, he would command Poland's outlet to the sea. That was enough to suffocate the country into submission. Till September 1st, Hitler tried to see what he could get by pressure politics. Poland, however, refused to put the noose around its neck. And on September 1st, the German machine of destruction crossed the Polish frontier. Chamberlain and Daladier, working through Mussolini, tried to have the troops called back, but Hitler refused. On September 3rd, first Britain, then France declared war. Nobody had known the striking power and speed of the German Panzer Division. The Germans had a perfect spy system in Poland. They knew where every airport lay. And 
army without an air force is blind. Poland's defenders, after the first days, had to fight without eyes. Poland was pierced and carved by rushing German knives. Two of them cut across the corridor, one from Pomerania, one from East Prussia. Another cut down toward Warsaw from East Prussia. Another stabbed in toward the industrial area. Another drove through Slovakia onto Krakow. The drives from the north and the south were flanking movements to force the Polish defending army on the west front to retire. But the swiftly advancing motorized divisions slashed through the Polish forces deep into the country. They destroyed communications behind the lines. In days, the Warsaw area was surrounded. Poland's one chance to prolong the struggle lay in establishing a line that could be held in eastern Poland on the Bug River. But on September 17th, the Soviet Union invaded Poland from the east. That sealed Poland's doom. Warsaw held out against the most brutal assault by artillery and bombers ever experienced up till that time by any city, but surrendered on the 27th. That was the eclipse of a nation of 35 million people. It had been swept away in six weeks. It is the bitterest lesson in preparedness ever taught. Thank <music> you.